Hey, it's Mary Lambert. Thanks to Romeo and the Saturday Night Online listeners for all the awesome Ask Anything questions. Let's start answering. Jamal from Mississippi asks, who is your celebrity crush? And I say to that, my celebrity crush is Michelle Shemuel. <laughs> Jen from Boise asks, how does it feel to know you inspire people of all ages? Feels good. This is what I've always wanted to do. I think before, um, before I got into music, I wanted to go into politics, actually. And after that, I was applying to graduate school to be a teacher. And um, uh, I decided to put off graduate school um, when I got the call to do Same Love. And so it feels sort of like this has been my path to not just create music for the sake of vanity or ego, but hopefully for the betterment of people. I believe in the beauty of humanity, and uh, I believe that I, I, um, I think I could be a force of good in the industry, and that's what I want to accomplish. So it feels really good, Jen from Boise. I love you. Okay, Corey from Shippensburg says, what was the biggest obstacle you faced when it was time for you to come out? Um, you know, I was really supported by my community and my friends and family in general. Uh, for me, the biggest uh, the biggest hurdle was um, reconciling my faith and and my sexuality, which has sort of been an ongoing thing for me. I'm, I'm constantly, you know, um, thinking back to the traditions of the church I was raised in. I was raised Pentecostal, um, and then when I was in high school, I joined the Evangelical Church. And in both uh, sects of those um, churches, in both those denominations, it's, it's pretty widely accepted that... Um, um, it's okay if you're gay, but you're still going to hell. <laughs> so uh, when you're 17 and you feel like you're a freak already and um, you're trying to just navigate what the world means as it is and then having a, an entire group of people tell you that um, you're not worthy of, of heaven or um, you're already second class by legislature, it's a, it's a it totally screws with your head and it makes you feel less and it makes you feel guilty and bad about things you shouldn't feel bad about. Um, so I was, I was really grateful for um, the people that I surrounded myself with at that time because they helped me get through it. And um, I found safe spaces and I, um, I actually started praying a lot more and I, was, um, I felt more connected with God at that time than I did prior, I think, because I found that um, I could still be strong in my faith without having um, a dude in a church tell me what scripture was or tell me what the Bible meant. And I, you know, religion is, is everybody's own personal journey, but that's what the answer has been for me. So I'm still, I'm still Christian, but I think there was, there was a time when I was, I felt really confused and conflicted. So that's my story. <laughs> Tiffany from Texas asks, where do you think you'll be in 10 years from now? 10 years, I will be 35. I don't want to be on the road. <laughs> I want to have kids and be married with my celebrity crush. And um, I wanna have built my house and I wanna have a couple Grammys under my belt. And I wanna be making breakfast in a really cool kitchen and singing to my babies. That's what I think I'll be in 10 years from now. And then like still making albums and stuff, but it just not being um, my entire like life, like not being every single day I'm on the road or something where I get, I kind of get all, all of it. I want it all. Okay, Gypsy from Ocala asks, who, how does it feel to know how inspirational you are to young girls and women? I think similar along to the, <clears throat> the earlier question, it's really fulfilling. I think... It would be really difficult for me to be a pop singer that sort of um, regurgitates other people's songs. And not that there's not a place for that. I just know that it's not the answer for me. That I, I get to have sort of this two-part process where um, songwriting for me is an insular, sacred experience. And then the joy of being a performer is extending that invitation. And um, I just love that, that two-fold process. And um, what's what propels it is, is the effect and to get emails from girls who are in rehab for eating disorders to say that they've um, they've found strength and they've my songs have been 
um, a catalyst in their healing. It's pretty incredible, and um, it's uh, it feels really good. <laughs> and I, I think, when I think back to when I was 18 or 15 or 19 or 22, like, I wish that there was a song on the radio that had female pronouns um, regarding love. And I wish that there was uh, something that told me that I didn't have to sleep with everybody to be wanted or loved. Um, and I, I, I would love to be that voice. I embrace that. And it makes me really happy and fulfilled. Dallas Lynn from Portland asks, I love your work. I'm wondering if you take the time to see fan art made in your honor. I absolutely love to see fan art. I think it's amazing. I definitely am one of those people that looks at my hashtags on Instagram and I see all the drawings and they're really nice. Sometimes they look a little wonky and I'm like, my nose doesn't look like that, but the, <laughs> the intention's there and it's really, it's, it's usually really beautiful and I'm, I take a time to look at it. I'm actually thinking of on tour having like a suitcase set up where if someone wants to like give me a letter or like, you know, tell me how they're feeling. Like I'm, I always, I always read my emails. I, I read uh, all the fan mail that comes in. So I love it. Thank you. You're the best. Sophie from New York City asks, what sparks your creativity to write your lyrics and poetry? I get, um, I get um, inspiration from every day, from um, mostly things that I need to process. I think there's some songwriters that sort of sit down and they're like, I'm going to make the best song possible. And for me, I, I sit down and I'm like, there is this thing that's burning out of me and I'm going to explode if I don't write this down. And, um, and so uh, songwriting is a, um, a vessel. It's a, it's a kind of communication for me to reach the world. And, um, and so I think it's, it's twofold in that way, in that same way of, um, of being a songwriter and a performer, because I think it's just about how you communicate with the world. And I love that. Ziana from Salt Lake City asks, what inspired you to write Body Love? It's an amazing question. I, um, I was 19 when I wrote Body Love, and that was six years ago. And that was at a time that um, I was really self-destructive. Um, I was, um, was self-harming. Um, I wasn't on meds for, um, for my mental disorder. I was staying up for 72 hours, I was binge drinking, I was doing drugs, and I felt worthless, and I was sleeping with anybody that would let me be with them, because I felt lonely, I felt worthless, I, and I hated myself, and I found that I was in great company in that way. All of my friends were doing very similar things, and I realized that it was just sort of in the culture of like 18, 19, 20-year-old girls to be binge drinking and to feel worthless and to idolize this one kind of thing, this one standard of beauty. And I think at some point we all sort of learn and like get our way through that, but there's a lot of people that get trapped in the, in the cracks of it and get stuck in, in whether it's drug use or, or, or self-harm or body dysmorphia and eating disorders. Um, and it doesn't have to be that hard. And I, I wrote Body Love because I wish that it was something, um, that I had heard when I was younger. And it was just sort of a mantra, like something I wanted to tell myself over and over of like, yes, love your body the way your mother loved your baby feet. That adoration is the way that you should be treating your own body because you're worth that. Every one of us is valuable and important and is worthy of love. And um, I just love humanity and I want humanity to be well. I think we're all hurting. so. That was where Body Love came from, and I'm really glad that it's made the impact that it has. And I love performing it every night, even though I've been performing for like six years. Every night, it's a new night. It's a new uh, proclamation of self. I love it. Thank you. <clears throat> Marla from Orange asks, how did you become such an amazing songwriter? What is your writing process? Well, that is generous. Um, how did I become such an amazing... Oh, it was practice. Um, practice. I started writing... Um, songs like since I could speak and get words out, I was I was writing songs to my Beanie Babies and you know <laughs> just goofy stuff. And my mom was a singer songwriter, so I was just raised around it, and um, it's always been a part of my life. But I think with anything, you have to you have to practice it if you want to do it, because. Um, 
Oh, there's this really good quote. I think Ira Glass said it. But it, the gist of it, I'm because I'm, I don't want to misquote it. The gist of it says that um, you have become an artist because you have good taste, or you're interested in art because you have good taste. And um, if you know what you're writing is bad, that's a good thing, because then you can recognize, you can discern what's good and bad. But there's a lot of people that get stuck there because they feel like, well, this is crap. I don't want to keep writing crap. So then they, they forget it and they move on. And I think all it takes is just sort of perseverance and knowing that that's just a stage and that once you sort of persevere and get through and cut through all the BS and learning how to get past cliches and things like that, that's when the, you're, you find your voice and, and the real artistry can come out. But it's, it's, you have to get through. I mean, I was writing rid ridiculous songs for the better part of my life. <laughs> and I still sit down and I, I listen to old songs and I'm like, what was I thinking? But sometimes I listen to old songs and I'm like, that was genius and what happened to me now? Um, <laughs> but that is my, that is my writing process. Um, Urabel from East Elmhurst asks, growing up, which artists were most influential in shaping your music? I, my first album that I ever bought was Jewel's Spirit album. So Jewel was very influential. And then, you know, I got into 90s alt rock. I loved Weezer and Green Day and Third Eye Blind. And, and then when I got into spoken word, I got really into hip hop. So there's been a lot of culmination. And then I studied classical music and wrote classical music. So kind of all over. And now I'm kind of obsessed with Top 40. So a lot of stuff. <laughs> um, Maddie from Cincinnati. Cincinnati from Maddie. Maddie from, that was fun. Your name rhymes with your city. But. How do you, how do you really get connected with your heart and soul to write music? How do you get connected to your heart and soul? Um, I think it's self-reflection. I think it's 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 just a process of being self-aware, um, and I make I try to make that a priority in my life. Of not not just being sort of aware of your surroundings and how you're affecting people with not just your words but your actions and your demeanor, but also being really aware of your own thought processes and. Um, and knowing what what you need, being able to ask for what you need is really important. And the only way you can do that is if you have the ability to listen to yourself. So um, I listen to myself a lot and myself is always saying, Mary, you're gonna explode if you don't write this song. So then I listen and I don't explode and I write an album. Lisa from Montreal asks, what piece of advice can you give to a gay or lesbian teen on being out and proud? Um. I have a couple thoughts because I feel like there's no blanket answer because everybody's coming from a different background and the same answer that would work for someone growing up in New York City or LA is going to be different from someone growing up in the suburbs of, you know, Louisiana. It's it's not it's not there's not a formula. You can't just be like, "Yes, be out, come out," you know? I think you should come out when you feel safe, when you feel ready, when you have a good support system. You have to find a safe space. You know, there's a reason that, that a big portion of homeless youth are LGBT, and that's because that, you know, they're in places where they're not understood, and it's and it can be really scary to come out. It's not to say you shouldn't come out because you're going to be homeless. That's just, this is terrible advice. But, <laughs> but I think it, it's just a matter of, of finding a community, and if you if you don't have that community, it's creating a safe space. It's, it's like making it happen. There's, there's the internet now. I don't know if you've heard about it. The internet's pretty awesome. But you can find a lot of resources in that way that I really, I care about. Um, but one thing that propelled me when I was out, because I came out when I was 17, and um, it was just, uh, the thing that propelled me was love. And I, I, I care very deeply about, you know, a, about love. And I think everybody should be allowed to love who they want to love. And that to me is the basis of the argument. It's not. It's not about a piece of paper. It's like give, I want equal treatment, and and um, I guess that's a fight. This is a very long answer, but um, props, props to you. Keep being out and proud, knowing that you are yourself, and you are strong, and you can do it. And I love you. I believe in you. Skylar from Atlanta asks, "What was your favorite book growing up?" I read so much when I was a kid. I spent my lunches in the library. Um, my favorite book growing up, I mean, I loved the Harry Potter series. 
but um, I, I'm going to be honest, I read every single Babysitter's Club book. I loved the Babysitter's Club. I wanted to be in the Babysitter's Club. Let's see. Probably the Babysitter's Club book series. Or Animorphs. Does anyone know the Animorphs? It's the best. Elise from Washington, D.C. says, what do your tattoos symbolize? Cool. Um, so I have uh, a tattoo on my wrist. It says, music saved my soul. And that is because the first album I ever bought was um, a Jewel record, and she has that song called uh, Will Save Your Soul. And I loved that song. And um, I always felt like music for me was, was the reason that I'm, I'm alive, being able to write. And I put it on my wrist as sort of a symbol for self-harm and that um, I've overcome a lot to, to be where I am and, and uh, uh, be writing music is a privilege. Um, I have an umbrella on my calf that is for the Pacific Northwest. And um, I kind of had this stupid pun when I got it. It was like, you know, they say, um, sometimes they say defense tattoos are gonna be on your calf. And so I was like, well, when it rains, it pours. If it does, I'm going to have an umbrella on my calf. <laughs> and my, uh, my tattoo, my sleeve on my arm is a bunch of flowers, but they're not just flowers. Um, I have pansies. Um, let's see, I, have, I got the first three pansies because I'm Mary the fifth. But I've come from a long lineage of Marys. And um, they all... We're all singers and piano players. So I'm Mary the fifth of five Marys that sing and play piano. And um, all of all my mom, my grand, my great grandma all love pansies. They all love purple pansies. And I've always wanted a garden, but I'm on the road all the time. So I was like, I'm gonna put a garden on my arm. And I showed my grandma, and she's like, Next time, just get me a card. And I was like, You got it, grandma. <laughs> and um, and then I, I also have rhododendrons on my arm for. For Seattle, it's a it's Washington State's flower because I love being from there. So those are my tattoos. I might actually get a heart on my sleeve because this has been a big year. We'll see. Caitlin from Salem asks, if you could perform with anyone dead or alive, who would it be? <sighs> this question's so hard because I my influences and the people that I love so much are like a range. So it's got to be somewhere between Natalie Maines from Dixie Chicks. Um, I would love to sing with um, um, Kendrick Lamar I'd love, or Drake. I would love to do a song with Drake. And um, who else would I love to perform with? I'd love to, I'd love to write a song with the Beatles and make that happen. That would be great. And, um, and Weezer. I'd love to do a song with Weezer. Um, Grace from Melbourne asks, how did you react the first time you heard yourself on the radio? I'm pretty sure there's an Instagram video of it on my feed. I screamed and then I went, oh my God. And then I cried and then I screamed more and then I harmonized with myself and I was like, is that okay? It is. It's okay to harmonize with yourself on the radio. Lynette from Dayton asks, were you afraid to release secrets because it's so real and personal? I think there was like a brief flicker in my head of like, wow, I'm telling everyone I'm clinically bipolar. And I was like, that sounds accurate of me because <laughs> I, I don't know any other way to be. I'm like kind of unapologetically myself. And for me, I, I want it, to, I'm happy to be on a public platform and invite others to sort of do the same. I think the best way you can ask people to be themselves is to do it first and put the lens on yourself. And um, that's what Secrets is for me. It's, um, I'm inviting you to live your life unashamed and without guilt and unapologetically because, again, we're all worthy of love and um, uh, deserving of a good life without carrying a weight around that's stupid. Like, people are, like, feeling bad about shit that they shouldn't feel bad about, like mental illness or being overweight. Like, these are just, some of these things are just characteristics that are part of us. And sure, like you can be complacent and sad in some things, but if you love yourself first and you're open and accept that, there's you can't be wrong. You can't be wrong. You have to be yourself. And then you can come to a place of whatever, you know, however you want to better yourself, however makes you feel good. I'm just a big proponent of self-care and what makes you feel good. And Secrets was a part of that process and the invitation to do so. Shally from Slidell asks, 
Do you see yourself as a role model? Do you feel like you have certain responsibilities? It's kind of ties to the last question. Um, I guess I, I guess I see see myself in some form as a role model because I keep getting told that. <laughs> I think that's part of it. But I, um, I'm just, I'm just being myself, and I, I don't know any other way to be. And I think it's important to be authentic, and that means living my truth. And if that is uh, helpful for other people, I'm, I'm glad to be a, a part of that. I'm glad to be a catalyst for someone's healing. Um, I don't feel pressure to, to have re responsibility. I think if there were any pressure, I feel like I kind of squashed it. Like, I mean, I, I, I was able to write a really great gay rights song that also sort of addressed my Christian background. I wrote a very pos body positive song, and now I just it, it's just speaking from my heart. I, I feel a pressure to be myself, but that's kind of put on by me. So I'm really happy. Ashley from Philadelphia asks, what does same love mean to you at this point? Same love is an inextricable part of my artistic identity, and it's it's always going to be um, a, it's always going to be a part of me, and I, I love that. You know, I think there are sometimes you you can do a song that gets so big and and people know you for that song. And if it's something that you don't believe in anymore or it's not relevant for you, at, you know, five years down the road, it's like a tattoo. Yeah. Ooh, this is a good line. Sorry. <laughs> like, can I write this down? But like, you know, hit songs are like tattoos because they stay with you and you have to perform it for the rest of your life, especially if it's massive. So for me, having Same Love be like my first tattoo, holy crap, I got a really cool first tattoo that I get to perform all the time and I get to find new ways to reinvent it for what it means to me. Because I still perform She Keeps Me Warm, which is, you know, a an, a, an extension of it. And um, it's all, it's all love and I, I find a new meaning for it every night and I love that. Leslie from Glasgow asks, what current artist would you love to collaborate with? Um, I have a lot of people again. Um, I love Sam Smith. I'd love to do a song with Sam. Um, Ed Sheeran, T. Swift, um, Sarah Bareilles. I have so, I'm a fan of so many people. That's why I'm like, I snuck in here. I shouldn't be here. I'm a fan. A lot of artists I would love to work with. Hannah from Godfrey asks, how does it feel when people compare you to highly regarded artists such as Adele? Um, just like that. Like, I snuck in. I don't, like, I'm waiting for someone to tap me on the shoulder and be like, get out of here, you hooligan. It feels crazy. It's surreal. Kay from Michigan asks, if you could live anywhere in the world, where would you live? I'm in the right place. I live right where I should be. But, um, you know, right now I'm kind of on the road, so living is almost kind of like a, a concept. Like living, like home is a concept that um, right now my home is sort of the, the tour bus and flying. And, um, and I'm living my dream right now, and I'm doing exactly what I've wanted to do. So I'm very happy where I'm at, and I'll be happy where I'm supposed to be five years from now, too with my kids. <laughs> Shelly from Dallas asks, how do you connect with your fans and in what ways do they inspire you? Um, I feel like I'm pretty good at social media and that's a really, a really cool way for me to connect with my fans. And, um, I just, I just try to be myself. I, I want, I want people to know that it's, there's a real human on the other end of it. And I also use my blog a lot to talk to my fans and I sometimes I share really, really personal things. Um, because I, I just like secrets I feel like it's important to be vulnerable and um, that's part of my message and my fans totally inspire me the messages that I get you know on a daily basis the emails the extended hugs the crying I'm I'm there I'm like I see you I see you we're all in this together Joe from Fullerton asked did you ever get bullied growing up if so how did you deal with it I did get bullied, um, and I got bullied mostly from my weight, and um, also people thought that I was gay when I was in fifth grade, so I got teased for being a lesbian when I was in fifth grade. Um, um, but the interesting thing about me 
is that I grew up with a lot of trauma and abuse in my early childhood. So for me, my coping mechanism was to create kind of an alternate world where I was popular and the greatest person in the world that everybody wanted to be friends with. So I found out that actually one of my bullies um, I thought was one of my best friends. And later on in my life, you know, I, 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 was, in, I was more active in theater and I was less weird and I became more socially <laughs> all right <laughs> fit in I guess and um, the girl was like yeah I bullied you we were not friends I made fun of you all the time and I was like no no you were best friends we walked we walked home from school together and she's like I yanked on your backpack and kicked you from behind the whole way I was like oh my god like I just didn't see it or I got cornered in the locker room when I was like in seventh grade and they stole my pants and they held them up for everyone to see it I was just like I was like yeah those are twelves I got them at Target did you want to borrow? Like, I was just so delusional that I thought I was the coolest person. And I don't know if that's going to work for everybody else, but I, I wish I had more advice for people being bullied. It's, um, you know, I, I don't, I wish I had an answer, but that's how I dealt with it is becoming totally and completely delusional. <laughs> Tess from Adelaide asks, what is your favorite song to perform live? Um, well, the new record is really fun, and it's uh, uh, it's very different than my last couple, you know, the years have been for me in terms of, like, really, really hardcore emotional stuff that I'm talking about in my earlier sets. This set is, is it's a pop album, so it's a pop set. Um, but I love performing Body Love still. I love doing it live. It's a way for me to sort of reconnect with myself and my body and my artistic identity and the audience all at once. Um, but on the new album, um, So Far Away is really fun to perform with the whole band. It's awesome. Kristen from Chicago asked, what was your inspiration for the Secrets video? Um, well, I got the treatment from uh, Declan Whitebloom, who's an amazing director, and he directed Taylor Swift's Never Getting Back Together, and I loved that video. It's sort of shot in like a one, it's a one take shot. And um, I want, I loved that concept, so I was really excited when the treatment he sent was similar to that. Um, obviously, it's not one take. I'm wearing different outfits, and it doesn't, it doesn't line up that way, but it has sort of that feeling. And um, uh, I just love the treatment because he sent the, secre not the secretary, but the therapist and the patient bit. I was like, oh, we have to do that. And um, I added in the operatic part because I was like, I should think I should just be wearing a Valkyrie helmet. Like, it should be like hysterical and then the curtain drops and we have confetti so we really collaborated on it but uh Declan is an incredible director I love that video it was so much fun okay thanks again for submitting your questions you guys I'm honored and it was so much fun and I love I love these questions and I love being vulnerable and I love you and um thanks to Romeo for having me and letting me talk all this time I love the sound of my own voice <laughs> have a wonderful night bye